good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're at. My name is Amy and I'm from the YouTube channel Realistic Ritz. Um, and Katie Powell, the photographer of Little Birds Photography, asked me to make this video for all of you lovely humans. For all of you lovely ladies that have a photography session with Little Birds Photography, I really hope that this video is helpful for you. Um, whether you are new to makeup and it's like a totally foreign thing, or if you consider yourself pretty good at it, I hope that you'll take the time to watch this video. Um, we'll talk about some necessities of makeup and photography, but also just the fact that it is there to naturally enhance what you already have. I have some products that we're gonna talk about today. Some are cream, some are powder, some are um, more high-end, some are drugstore. So hopefully you'll be able to find some things in this video that um, are applicable to your life. Um, but I also hope that you just enjoy this and that it is a tool that can be applied to your photography session with Little Birds Photography. If you like what you see or you're just interested, please keep watching. Okay, so before we actually put any makeup on, we're going to just talk a little bit first about why it's important and what are some of the things that we're gonna focus on. The two main reasons why we put makeup on during a photo shoot is to bring life to the face and to bring structure to the face. So when you're outside or if you're in a studio with a lot of bright lights, sometimes it'll just wash out your face and you'll become a 2D, one color being, and we don't want that. When we bring life to the face, I'm talking about color and highlight and opening up our eyes and things like that. And when I talk about the structure of the face, I'm talking about contour and the shapes of um, your different facial features. And that can be done on the face, but also with eyeshadows. And we're gonna get into that when we actually apply the makeup. So different conditions that should be in place when you are either practicing your makeup or actually putting it on for a photo shoot is that your face is clean and moisturized. So wash your face and then put a face lotion on. That you wear a neutral shirt, because sometimes if you have a brightly colored shirt on, um, it'll reflect onto your face and you'll be like, oh, why do I have green tones on my face? It's because you're wearing a lime green shirt. So I highly encourage you to wear a neutral color shirt that won't reflect onto your face. And then to be in a well-lit environment or to even go by a window or go outside. Later in this video, after I apply my makeup, I'll go outside so you can see the difference between when I'm in here in the bathroom and when I'm actually outside. I think in a natural day-to-day -day setting and especially in a photo shoot, the point of putting makeup on is to naturally enhance what you already have. It is not to cover you up. You do not need makeup to be beautiful, but it is to make sure that people can see the beauty that is already naturally in your face. Otherwise, it'll get all washed out from the bright lights. So when talking about the makeup itself, it's really important to find what's best for you in terms of texture and color and price. That's really important as well. So it's important to find out what your skin tone is. If you are warm toned, which is more pinky undertones, if you are cool toned, which is more yellow undertones, or if you are neutral. And a really easy way to do that is to go into a place like Sephora and they will test your skin tone. So they have this little machine that looks like it should belong in a doctor's office, but it's safe, it's fine. Um, um, and it basically takes pictures of your skin and the different layers of your skin. So they just put it up to your forehead, your cheek, and your neck to test the different um, levels of skin tone that you are. And then it comes up with an entire list of products that are that exact color match. So you can just type in your skin tone and a ton of products will come up um, that you can just like add to cart, add to cart, add to cart because you know them at your skin tone. So that's just one example of how you can find it out. The other one, which is really tough unless you have a buddy with you who also knows makeup, is to just go to the store and try it out. Um, or to go somewhere like Bare Minerals and they'll test it just on their products so it gets a little bit difficult um, if you don't want to buy their products. Um, but they will test out what skin tone is best for you. And the most important thing that any makeup person ever can do, whether you're new at this or whether you are seasoned, is to practice. Especially when you're not sure how things are gonna go. Um, it's really important to practice your makeup and that might seem like a lot of work, um, but just do it when you feel like. Be sure to get your makeup products far enough ahead in advance um, to where if something doesn't go well, uh, you can explore more options. 
Okay, 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 enough talk. Let's actually put some makeup on. So before we jump into makeup itself, I'm just gonna make a disclaimer. Make sure your products all work together nicely. So your color of blush works with your eyeshadow, works with your lip color, um, works with the contour color, all those things. And if all of that jargon sounds like really intimidating to you, don't worry, we'll break it down. Girl. Yo. Something that is very important for no matter what kind of toned look you do is to get a primer. Um, I am just using the Mineral Infused Face Primer by e.l.f. and this doesn't have um, any color to it. Where some primers have um, color correcting, like if you have redness, like I have some blemishes right now that I should use color correcting on. So I'm going to squirt this primer onto my hands and I'm just going to apply it all over my face. very important ingredient in this pretty cake because it'll help your makeup stay on whether it's hot whether it's cold whether your face is really dry um, and it'll keep your makeup on for like forever which is sweet until you wash it off of course and then I'm just gonna go right in with my foundation on top of that so just to clarify I washed my face I applied moisturizer I left it on and then I applied primer on top of that and going to put foundation on top of that now I'm using Mac Studio Face and Body and my color is N2 and I'm just going to, it comes in a little like squirt bottle um, and so I'm just going to apply that on the back of my hand and you can either apply your foundation with a beauty blender, uh, those are really popular right now, or the Real Techniques version of that is the Miracle Complexion Sponge, but I prefer to use a flat um, buffing brush. Now I feel like this really works it into the skin and also makes it possible for it to have a lighter coverage so I don't feel like I have like pounds of foundation on. That is not a cute look for photography. So you want a foundation that um, can let your skin breathe, if that makes sense, can let your skin breathe but also um, evens out your skin tone. Now, if you don't like wearing a lot of foundation, a really good compromise is a BB or a CC cream. They are moisturizing, they have sunscreen in them, um, and they also have a light to medium coverage, which is perfect for photography. to wearing makeup at all or even a lot of makeup, um, I would not say that a photography session is like your time to shine. Um, wear what you are confident in, what you are comfortable in. If you have a couple blemishes, you can always say to your photographer, can you like edit those out? You don't need to put on pounds of makeup because we still want it to be pictures of you. We don't want it to be like, eh, who's this mystery person that kind of looks like my friend June? We want this to still look like you, so don't put on pounds of makeup if you're not used to it. Great, so we will let that set into the skin, as we like to say, and we'll move on to eyes. Now with the eyes, you don't wanna do anything crazy. We're gonna stick with natural tones. As a disclaimer for all of this makeup, this is for senior portraits, for engagements, for um, like first baby portraits, things like that. If you're doing a fashion, more like avant-garde photo shoot this you need to talk with your photographer about what she wants to see on your face we are going for an enhanced natural look so with our eyes i am using a the naked basics palette by urban decay this normally has black in it here it's called the shade is called crave but mine has disappeared just kidding it broke and fell out but there are um, drugstore versions of this 
palette so you don't need to get the Urban Decay version but get a palette that has natural tones in it that you can play with and mess with um, but won't mess with uh, the natural enhancement that we're going for. With eyeshadow it's really important just like with our foundation we used a primer with our eyeshadow we're also going to use a primer and so right now I am using NYX eyeshadow base and it does have color to it it just looks like a like a really thick concealer but it's pretty dark and I just stick my little thingy in there and I put it all over my eyelid and I go all the way up to the brow just because we want to put it anywhere that we will apply eyeshadow for eyeshadow brushes I have the real techniques um, I set I don't know what you call it but any brushes would do I would highly encourage you to use eyeshadow brushes for your eyeshadow. So I am taking um, their base shadow brush, it's pretty fluffy, and I'm going to go in with the color Walk of Shame. It's the warm toned um, neutral color here, and I'm going to put that all over where we put primer. Gotta tap off the excess. I tap it off in the sink so it's easy to wash away, and we just put that everywhere. There is a yellow toned, a cooler toned, uh, neutral in here but we are not going to use that for this look we're gonna use the warmer toned one and we just put that all over where we put primer boop, 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 boop. don't be afraid to load it up load it up load it up boop -a -doop -a -doop -doop. now I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing to my other eye now once you have put your just your base layer all over your eyelid and up to your brow we are going to go in with a little bit of a darker color. Now I would describe this as like a taupe, not really a tan, like a taupey, darker <laughs> color. Good one, Amy. This one is called Naked 2. It's where my pointer finger is. We're gonna go in with actually that exact same brush. We're gonna go in with the fluffy fluffy, and we are going to put this in our crease. So just like how we're going to contour on our face, we're gonna contour just a little bit on our crease. Now, if you're not sure what the crease is, you can stick your finger in here and feel like your eye socket, um, where your eye socket meets your brow bone. Um, so, dang, 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 there's a bone there. In case you just weren't aware, there's a bone there. Uh, and your little eyeball fits right inside of it. Cute! So, we're going to feel where our crease is. You can just poke all along there gently. Poke gently to your eye. Oh, and don't do this to somebody else. Have them find their own crease. Um, and we are just going to apply this taupe color along, we're going to start on the outside and blend in. So I have this taupe color on my brush, tap off the excess, and we're going to start on this side and just blend in. Now it might not feel like a lot at first, but you want to start with little and build rather than put too much on and have to wash your whole face and start over. Sometimes I take it down into this outer third. Great, so you see how to add just a little bit of dimension to my eye. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same to my left. That looks pretty even for now. Now, if you want to go in and deepen that crease, if you're feeling confident and you wanna go in and deepen that crease a little bit, um, you can take a smaller brush so that the color goes exactly where you put it. And I'm gonna go in with Faint. It's kind of a chocolatey brown color. And we are going to use that just on the outer third. This is little outer V right here very lightly. Light hands, light hands. See how that deepened it even just a little bit more, but it doesn't look psycho. That's, we don't want to look psycho. That's not what we're going for here. Now, if you've got some weird splotchiness, like I do, because we're all works in progress, you're gonna take a fluffy brush, so I'm using that same base shadow brush that I was using before, and I'm going to go in with the taupe color and a little bit of the light, light color that we used before, and we're just gonna blend a little bit. It's really easy. Just blendy, blendy until all the edges soften out. 
because we don't want any hard edges here. That is like the opposite of what we want. Great, I think we are almost done with eyes, which is crazy. I am going to take a fine liner brush that looks like this. It also can look like a, a lip brush, and I'm gonna do a little trick. Now, when it comes to um, photography, eyeliner can be really tricky, but it doesn't have to be. Now, with eyeliner, color is sometimes uh, a battle. And my opinion as a makeup consultant and a makeup uh, aficionado is that if you are a redhead or a blonde or any spectrum of those two, or even a light brown, please do not use black. Please do not use black. You can use brown, you can use a taupe color, you can even use a black brown, but I have practically black hair and I don't use black. Unless I'm doing a dramatic wing, which is not for this look. So I use either a dark brown, a black brown, and my hair is basically black. So please, people, unless your hair is black, please don't use black. It just like doesn't look very good, to be totally honest. And the whole point of this is to open up our eyes. We want to look like, we want it to look like there's life behind these little balls. So what we're gonna do is lightly line our top lash line. Now, if that sounds scary, we're gonna do it together. Don't worry. So what I'm going to do, I'm at a sink. So what I'm going to do is, I don't know if you heard that, but I turned on the sink a little bit and I am going to dip my brush in the water. So I'm gonna get it wet, ah, it's all wet, and I'm going to make a little wet spot in this brown eye, um, eyeshadow. So, this is kinda of hard to do, uh, show you at the same time. So I'm basically making a little bit of a paste in this brown eyeshadow. And we are just going to lightly line along this top lash line. And what that's going to do is basically just thicken our eyelashes and make our eyes pop without messing with this naturally enhanced look that we're doing. So I'm gonna take this and just going to press it along my upper lash line. And I'm going to flip so that I can do this other side. Great, and because our lashes stop here, we can stop the eyeliner there. Do you see how different these eyes look? It's really important to recognize that. And for the most part, eyes are done. If you want to do something to the lower lash line, take something like a uh, little accent brush and go into that brown, and we're just gonna smudge out under this eye really quick. If you want to make them stick out, but you don't want a harsh line, I used to put eyeliner on the bottom all the way across, and for the time, yeah, you know, early 2000s, I'm sure that looked fine. But right now, we want a soft under eye look because that opens up the eyes more. Okay, so when apart from mascara, our eyes are done. I would highly advise against putting black or brown liner in your waterline. I just do not think that looks very good and it closes your eyes. So it's kind of a sultry look, so if you're going for that, then fine. But if we're gonna stick with this naturally enhanced face, um, we don't want to put eyeliner in this bottom waterline. Let's move on to face. So I'm going to contour a little bit with a cream contour and we're going to contour in just a few places. We're not going to go crazy. So if this, the word contour is scary to you, do not fret, my dear. We will do this together. So I'm just, I'm taking some on my finger, but then I'm rubbing off the excess so that it's just a very light amount. And I'm gonna go under my cheekbones, um, on either side of my nose, and then maybe uh, on either side of my forehead. We'll see. So here, and then we'll blend it. just to give some dimension. Remember, we don't want to look like a flat 2D zombie. Great, now let's go ahead and do concealer. It was hiding. Okay, so now I am using e.l.f. Under Eye Conceal and Highlight in the color Fair, because I certainly am not tan. Um, and then we're gonna go on um, on our blemishes for sure. 
boing, 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 boing. I have a bunch right now. So that's just real life. Under eye, down the bridge of our nose, just to help with that dimension again. Up here. So basically, if you haven't caught on yet, we're painting on our face. And sometimes they go along the jaw. And for application purposes, we will do just that. When I do my under eye, I have a translucent powder ready because one of the last things you want ever is for your under eye concealer to crease. You guys totally know what I'm talking about. Even if you don't know makeup, you know what I'm talking about. It's like, I have a lot of wrinkles under my eye. I hope you can see this. He, and it's like wrinkle, 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 wrinkle. I should name them, that'd be fun. But when I put cream products all up in that biz, I need to make sure they don't stick together and form those creases. So we're going to powder right away after each eye. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it in my right eye so you can see. And so just blend it out like you normally would. Blendy, blendy, make sure the edges are in good shape. And then no matter how high up I blend, I usually just always powder. And so I take that same eyeshadow brush that I use a bunch. Um, it's called a base shadow brush. I just feel like it fits really nicely in here. And I just apply powder. I get like a lot on there. It's like all flaky everywhere, don't even care. I get it on there and just tap it in. Great. Let's go ahead and do this other eye and we'll blend the rest out. are done with um, concealer what is that called concealer and contour and now to bring life to our cheeks we're going to slap some highlight on this face this is pro oh this is probably my favorite part of makeup application so I have wisp in ColourPop oh my gosh do you see how beautiful that is I can't so I'm just gonna apply it with my fingers and we want to apply this on the high points of the face, so like where the sun would hit us. So I'm going to go top of the cheekbones. And because we want to glisten in the sun like a fairy, uh, I am not being stingy about this. Oh, it feels so nice. You guys, this is so smooth. Uh, down the bridge of my nose. You can put some up here if you'd like. Cupid's bow, dang, 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 dang. And sometimes I slap a little bit of this as my highlighter eyeshadow. So I go under here. This just kind of ties the look together. And in the corner of my eye. Great, and that is it for highlight. So now we're gonna powder all over the face. And I'm using a big fluffy brush. Oh, and this powder is uh, by Too Faced and is just their, um, translucent pressed powder, but it is, it does have a color and it's very fair. So it brightens my face. So we're gonna go across the forehead because I have forehead creases. Mm -hmm. Around our nosy. For sure around our mouth. Under here. Great. Got to make sure you can still see that highlight. Can you see it? Can you see it? Yep, we're still good. And then I am going to go in with this beautiful blush by Too Faced that's called um, Who's Your Poppy? And it is um, kind of a shimmery, it's got like gold flecks in it. And this is our blush, so it also smells incredible. So we're going to just pop that on the cheeks. And if you put too much on, take your powder brush. Blendy blendy. Again, naturally enhanced, so we're not gonna go crazy. But this has a little bit of highlight in it as well, um, so that helps the products kind of work together. Okay, just a couple things left. I'm gonna slap some mascara on this face, and in order to continue brightening up these eyes, focus on the top lashes on the outside. 
Oh, I am just using uh, CoverGirl Lash Blast Volume in Black Brown. This is probably one of my favorite mascaras. Mascaras. Masquerade. And don't go crazy. You want them to still look like lashes. You don't want them to look like spider legs on your eyeballs. Can't have that. The last step is lippies. Uh, the rest of this looks and feels pretty good. Um, and so with lips, you can have a little bit of fun. Don't have too much fun. Um, but I am, I have two different options here that I think would be good for whoever you are. Um, one of them is from Bare Minerals and is called Make Your Move. It is this beautiful, somewhat neutral color. Um, it's like a rosy nude. And then I have um, a ColourPop lippy stick in the color Cami. And that's what I'm going to um, put on. And it's also a similar rosy color. Finished look. If you want, you could slap some individual lashes just on the outer corners again to open up your eyes. Um, but let's go see what this looks like outside. Okay, so I just walked outside and it's pretty sunny today, but right now I'm in the shade and I feel like this looks pretty good. My foundation might be a little bit dark for my skin tone, but I think um I think it would work out just fine. So I think this is a really important step, especially if you are going to be taking pictures outside, um, to make sure that your makeup looks good outside. One thing I forgot to mention earlier is that these steps that I um, covered, like contour, bringing life to the face, if you don't normally do those things, I would highly suggest that you do um, because photographing well is a really tough thing. Um, especially if you're outside and the sun is really bright and then all of a sudden your face looks one color and one dimensional. The whole point of photography is for everybody to see how beautiful you are. And so we still want you to look like yourself, but we want to be able to see yourself, if that makes sense. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you liked me or just liked what you saw, um, please check out my YouTube channel, Realistic Ritz. Um, and I post new videos whenever I want. I would love to see you over there. And I also have an Instagram under the same name, Realistic Grits. And really the focus of that is to approach our day confidently and embrace our femininity, but in a way that is um, friendly to our self-confidence and is also friendly to our budget. We like that. Have fun at your photo shoot and I hope this video was helpful to you. Bye.